Okay, anybody have an answer for this? I think, I think it's confusion. I think people are confused. I'll give you a, a thorough example of how and why people get confused. So it was recently, uh, this past April, it was my uh, wedding anniversary. We're coming back from, from Scottsdale back to Gilbert. And uh, my wife is reading one of these magazines, uh, like Star Magazine or one of these women's magazines. Uh, uh, and, and I look over, I'm like, holy crap, you got to be kidding me. So like right while we're driving, I like took a picture of the, the magazine. And uh, Lauren Hill from the Hill, or Lauren Conrad, right, from the Hills, has hired Dave Navarro as her personal trainer. And I'm thinking, that is pretty interesting. So I get home and I, you know, I live and die by Google. So I'm Googling Dave Navarro. And I just want to know, like, you know, what certifications does he hold? Like, what, what are his philosophies? Like, is he into functional training? Or, you know, does he do Pilates? Or does he, you know, I just want to know more about the guy. This is literally the only thing I could find on Dave Navarro. The only thing I could find. That potentially could confuse people, I think. All right. So then, you know, anybody, anybody here have young girls in their lives, daughters, you know? This, this is one of their idols, you know, Beyonce. I am happy to say that she does now advise against the maple syrup diet, so that's helpful, okay? But, you know, these are the people that young girls are emulating, and, you know, they want to look like this, so, you know, that could be confusing, potentially. Now, I'm a premier trainer with a, a, a very cool service called podfitness.com, and it's, uh, it's kind of like you go to the website, you put in all your goals and your height and weight and favorite color, and then you pick your celebrity trainer. And then what happens is, is they, they mix, like if you, if, you, if you select me as your trainer, you'll hear me on your iPod walking you through the workout, but then you can pick whatever music you like in the background, right? So it kind of mixes your favorite music from iTunes with whoever, you, you know, the workout instructions. So, but it was a dark day in pod fitness history when they hired freaking Danny Bonaducci as one of their prior, their premier trainers. Do you guys know anything about Danny Bonaducci? I mean, he has allegedly had issues with um, illegal drugs, alcoholism, steroid abuse, and if I'm not mistaken, um, picking up male prostitutes or something like that. So. Uh, did you see the award show where that Johnny Fairling guy jumped him? He does have good overhead pressing strength, I will say that. Dumped the guy right on his head. But this could confuse people, right? And by the way, Danny Bonaducci looks totally jacked. But it's not because he's doing the right things, it's in spite of what he's doing. All right? Who knows who this is? You will win a free t-shirt if you know who this is. Unless you've been to one of my previous seminars. This is, you should know this, okay? This is Leonid Taranyenko. This dude did the heaviest clean and jerk in recorded history, 586 pounds back in the 70s. He's a big dude, like he weighs like 360 or something. There are amazingly very few pictures of him uh, on the web, which is kind of a, a travesty. So I'm watching like Wide World of Sports back in the 70s and he's doing like a world championships. And I'm there with my sister, who at the time really had no interest or knowledge in, in exercise or fitness or training or anything like that. And uh, so they show him doing like his opening clean and jerk, I forget what it was, like whatever, 545 pounds or something. And after he does that effort, he's, you know, he's on his hands and knees and he's just gassed out of his mind. And you know, if you know anything about Olympic lifting, the clean and jerk takes four seconds, right, at most. So four second effort and he's gassed. Then the next competitor comes up, he does his clean and jerk, and then they go back in the staging area and they watch him, and two guys are like helping him to a chair, like he's totaled, right? So then they show another competitor, they go back in the staging area, and now it's 15 minutes later, now they've got him in a chair, he still can't even stand up because he's so gassed. At which point my sister says, man, that dude is in bad shape, he's out of shape. <laughs> And I'm, and I'm thinking, then I had that moment of cognitive dissonance. I'm like, okay, he just set a world record in an Olympic sport. You know, you know what I mean? People associate fitness with aerobic fitness exclusively. And they also base it on, you know, your level of fitness has much more to do with what you can do and a lot less to do with how you feel after you do it. Make sense? Pop quiz, who's the fitter athlete here? Who is in better shape? Well, um, 
this is Manny Yarborough, who was um, a, a world amateur champion in sumo wrestling. And this is Gia Johnson, who has been involved in track and field and uh, also bobsled in the uh, Winter Olympics, last two Winter Olympics ago. But she was never a world champion. So Yarborough is in better shape than she is because fitness is context dependent. You can't talk about fitness without having a context for it. If you're a world champion shot putter, you're going to suck on the marathon. And if you're, if you're good at the marathon, that would be a bad thing, and vice versa. Okay, so fitness means readiness. It means your ability to cope with your everyday life, whether you're an athlete or you sit at a desk or some combination of the two. It means having the ability to get through the needs of your everyday life, and I think with a little margin, right, with a little left to spare in case of emergency. That's what fitness means. But I think he's dead now, by the way. I think he's stroked out. But he, he was very fit. All right, so what about late night infomercials? Not so good. If you want to, anybody ever come up with an idea for like, uh, like a, a fitness infomercial device? I have over the years, you know, and you think about, maybe I'll call Guthy Ranker and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be rich like Tony Little here. But I actually did that one time and uh, do you know what the three requirements are for a successful infomercial, you know, product for fitness? Three, it's got to be, you got to be able to do it in three minutes or less a day. You have to be able to watch TV while you're doing it and you have to be, you have to be able to uh, fold up and go under the bed. If you don't have those three things, you're toast. Okay. All right. So now, um, I had an advanced look at Cassandra's slides and she had this woman on the slides. N not, not, in a, not in a positive way, but uh, you'll like this because this isn't positive either. So, I was amazed to find out that she's on the President's Council for uh, Physical Fitness because um, if you read her first book, she talks about how the hamstring um, uh, uh, originates from the pelvis and inserts into the ankle. That could be confusing. Okay. Can you, can you trust your personal trainer? You know, I, um, do you know who popularized all this stuff? I don't know if I should tell my Paul Check story because this thing's being recorded. I was actually there, like, Paul Check's the guy who popularized all this stuff, you know? So there's a video he has on his website uh, of him squatting 135 on top of a ball. Like, it's, it's a good stunt, don't get me wrong. And so I was there and I, you know, I said, Paul, like, how freaking long did it take you to learn how to do that? And he's like, I don't know, it's the first time I ever tried it. So he didn't, he's not a stud because he does this. He was a stud anyway, and that's why he can do it. I'm not against gym stunts, don't get me wrong, but you shouldn't be promoting it as like a training method, I think. Okay, so don't you love how the companies, all these companies like McDonald's and Philip Morris, they, they kind of position, they try to position themselves as the solution to the problems they create in the first place. That could be confusing. This could be confusing, you know, potentially. You guys ever watch The Biggest Loser? Yes, you do. So look, recently they start, it used to be where Biggest Loser was all about just how much weight you could lose in a period of time. Recently they've started also looking at body composition, which is the first objection you'd have when you watch that show, like why don't they do body composition? This one woman, I think it is this woman on the top left, um, she lost in one week 11 pounds in one week at, at, at one, you know, in one episode. Then they checked the body fat, she had lost no fat. So check this out, how would you like to lose 11 pounds in one week and none of it's fat? Like what are you losing? That could be confusing. <laughs>